All right, so finally going to make a update video. Well, I'm, I'm continuing on right now. So uh, I've actually stopped working on this one because uh, I had another issue. So, well, I think I showed you already the broken stud on it. So I left that alone because I still need to clean the um, uh, block so I could put the head on and bolt it down the whole nine. So I stopped on that one. I continued on my forerunner like I said I was going to continue on. And so I actually got further than uh, I expected to so quickly I guess. Um, I actually already have the head in. So the head is in. Uh, I have the intake on the bottom. Uh, and I have the water, new water pump in, and I have the timing set. So I have the timing here on the on this sprocket, on this sprocket, and on the crank. It's an oily, greasy, disgusting mess down there, and it's also raining. So it's actually been raining on and off all day today, but um, I've been under here, so it just started picking up just now. Anyway, I just wanted to do a real quick update on this uh, Forerunner, and I've got the, uh, all this set up. I wish I would have taken video of uh, per every step I was taking when I got the head on it. When I got it to torque down uh, but where I live I don't get really good internet service so I have to use my uh, phone as a uh, hotspot and I leave my phone upstairs and this is what I used to record so um, but this is the update so I got new gaskets on the intake uh, both the bottom part of the intake and the top end where the plenum is um, I got the hose in I got the new spark plugs in it and I got the timing on um, I haven't it's still loose on the timing I haven't put in the the, the last uh, the, the tensioner before I put the bracket uh, the brackets right there so that's gonna go In here it's gonna cover that spot um, but uh, I haven't I haven't put the tensioner there so for today uh, I'm going to wrap this up I'm, with the last step I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the the tensioner on here and then uh, that's gonna be set give it a couple revolutions make sure that it's okay um, I have everything set and good. Uh, the timing marks on this head are good. Um, when I was trying to rotate them, trying to rotate the crank earlier because it was at a different angle, um, I didn't have the belt on yet, but I can feel compression on the cylinder. So as far as timing goes, I feel like that's going to be fine. Um, but yeah, that's going to be next. So... Continuing my challenge here. I got a mess. It's freaking raining. I've been at it on and off. I started kind of late today So this one should be up and running hopefully this week um, And then I got that forerunner over there I just kind of left that one as is for now because that stud broke on it and I didn't want to continue on with it So today's April the 7th um, I Wish I could show uh, I would have shown every step in between but uh, hey, this is where we're at now, and uh, it's coming along. I already put a new oil filter in it. You barely see it back there. I put new motor oil in it. It has a. It's pretty much a blend because I I use all the excess oil that people uh, or the extra oil that people don't use on their cars. Uh, I save the quarts at a time. So I've been doing jobs in and out. I'm still been. I'm still working uh, and doing in between doing all this stuff. Which actually tomorrow I'm going to continue on that uh, Monte Carlo. So tomorrow there's a Monte Carlo 
uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna add to to the video because uh, I've I've taken up the what you call it uh, that is a as another addition to my uh, to get into my challenge. So obviously I have my own cars. Um, I have that forerun over there that's uh, you know it's delaying me now. And uh, I got my Ranger. That one that one's been there for a minute. But what I want to do is finish this up so this is the update for now for today um, hopefully I have it running sometime soon because tomorrow I'm gonna take up some time yesterday I worked on some other dudes car so the Monte Carlo I just want to get it rolling and, and I'm moving pretty fast on that one uh, it's not it's not as intricate as these newer motors so yes sir um, I'll see you later I'll let you guys know what's going on all right, so today is a beautiful day, as you can see. Birds are chirping. Bees are buzzing. So we can see them. And trucks are almost done. So uh, this one's actually all put together now. Uh, I went ahead and put in a new radiator. And we can see that brand new radiator. Uh, connected everything up. Everything's plugged in, ready to go. Uh, I need to clean the coolant bottle uh, for for this one because. I used to just add water to drive it, and after time it would uh, corrode and and it would turn a, a ugly orange color, rusted color. So uh, I need to clean that out because there's probably a bunch of crap in there. Uh, the issue with that it had was when it would burn coolant. Um, since it would burn cool, cooling, I I would have to add water. I would just add water. I wouldn't even waste my time putting cooling in it. So anyway, but she's very very close to starting. Um, all I gotta do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the brake pads because these are about done. So I'm gonna replace those. And uh, one last thing though, I have to fix this. So this is the uh, thread that hooks up to the fuel line. Now the fuel line is here. This is the one that hooks up to the vehicle. So this runs from the fuel tank along with the rest of these um, all the way to here. And then from here it hooks up to, let me see, where is it? To the fuel injector I mean I'm sorry to the fuel rail through here and this is threaded onto that one so what happens is when you're trying to remove these these are very very tough to remove it feels like they're cross threading turns it seems to be a thing with these forerunners and when you try to disconnect the fuel the fuel line he from here uh, it is extremely difficult. It feels like it's seizing. It feels like the threads are actually cross-threading and it almost feels very difficult to remove. At least the last two that I did, this is a 97 and then that other uh, black forerunner that I was working on uh, is a 98. So 97, 98, third gens, uh, seems to have this issue. Um, so it's extremely difficult to try and remove and I thought under that at that time I thought I was cross threading it and I ended up having to cut it and so I figured ah, I'll just reflare it I'll, I'll uh, use some pipe cutter cut this and then uh, put, find another fitting on it and reflare it but that was not the case I, it turns out that uh, it seems to be a common issue because both of them, this the 97 and the 98 Forerunner, both gave me that same issue. 
So, uh, this is the last, essentially this is the last step. That's all I need. This and the radiator hoses. But everything else is plugged on. It has water oil in it. I just need to put coolant in it and get some fuel in this thing. And the battery I already have, it's in the truck over here. And that's all I gotta do. So, I'm gonna go on the hunt for finding the uh, pipe cutter. Because I don't have one. And they're not difficult to find. Just gotta go to the store and get one. So, I might go to a, a garden store or something and pick up the pipe cutter. See if they have it. And uh, cut this thing. And then put this on there and use my uh, flare tool. I have a flare tool that I rented just for this. And just so I can finally get some fuel in it, I'll uh, start priming the lines. Uh, and obviously get the coolant uh, hoses installed. So, but I'm first gonna clean this tank here. But as of now, I'm gonna go for that, that thing. But everything else is pretty much ready to go. So I'll give you an update in a few.